Can everyone hear me? Okay. If you can, just raise your hand in the middle and I will try to adjust. This is winning game for recursion, where we're going to learn how to calculate winning strategies for some simple games. So let's start off with a simple game. This is called the white box game. We have two piles of objects here in their triangles and circles. And two players take turns uh, removing these shapes. And you have two options. You can remove as many shapes as you want from a single pile, or you can remove the same number from both of them. And the game ends when we run out of shapes, and you win when you take the last shape. Or equivalently, if it's your turn and there's no shapes left to take, you lose because you can't make a move. Let's look at an example of this game. So let's say we have these five triangles and ten circles, which I'll represent as five comma ten. The two players are going to be player A and player B. So player A's turn, player A goes first. Player A can remove two from each pile, because that's the same number. And now there's three and eight. It's player B's turn. Player B could remove three from the second pile. That's just fine. Player A's turn. Player A could remove two from the first pile. So now we are down to one and five. Player B could remove three from the second pile. Now we're at one and two. Player A might want to remove one from both piles. And now we're at zero and one. Player B only has one move available to take the last shape. And now we're at zero and zero, and player A's turn. Player A has no move, so they lose. Uh, player B won because they took the last shape. So that's how White House game goes. And now, Let's talk about strategy in a very simple case. Um, so here's a summary of the game we just had and all the states that we went through in that game. So here's strategy in a much simpler case of one and three. So like one triangle is three circles. So we can take as many as we want from the first pile, the only move is to zero, three, or from the second pile to one, two, or one, one, or one, zero, or we can take the same number from both piles and move to zero, two. So those are the moves that player A has at the beginning of this game. Now, the thing about this game is that for most of those moves, player B has a response that ends the game. So from 0-3, player B could take all three from the second pile. From 1-1, one, one, player B could take one from each pile, etc. And so player B would end the game and player A would lose. So what that really means is that these four moves that uh, have these arrows coming out of them representing player B's ending the game are not good moves for player A to make. They're, they really should be considered if player A is going to be playing well. So that means if we're talking about strategy, player A should really just focus on this one move to one, two. And then from one, two, what moves could player B make? Player B could go to zero, two, or go to one, one, and one, zero by taking from the second pile, or they could take one from each to move to zero, one. These are the moves player B could make. But from all of these states, Player A could then end the game. They could take one from each pile for 1-1, one, one, etc. So that means that no matter what player B does on that second turn, player A has a good response that ends the game. In some cases, the, namely in the first two, player A also has uh, stupid responses that won't win the game. But from those two, uh, they, can, uh, they do have good responses as well. Uh, so here's like the whole sort of game tree of states that matter, and the move that really makes this decisive a win for player A is that move to 1-2. That's the correct move for the beginning of the game. So that's how this strategy works in this very simple game. Let's talk about this in a bit more generality. So at the end of the game, there's zero in each pile. And if it's your turn and there's zero in each pile, you lost. You can't make a move. So I'm going to label that as L for a losing state. And then there are lots of positions from which you can end the game in one move. We've seen some of them already, like 1-1 one, one and 2-0. Two, there's also 2-2. Two, two. There's infinitely many uh, off to the right there. And since you can win in one move, we're going to label those as W for winning states. And now there are some states. We saw one of them in the previous game. Uh, and there's more. Well, uh, for this level, there's just these, where all of your moves are to one of these winning states on the second row. So when B was faced with 1-2, there was nothing they could do. All they could do was hand player A a state from which player A could win. So those are also losing states against a competent opponent. Uh, and then we can keep going. We can keep building sort of a tree of possible game states. 
So for instance, if you can move to one of those two losing states, like if you're at the one three that we looked at a minute ago, then you can win because you can make one of those good moves. And so for all of those moves up there, uh, all of those states up there, there is a move to these losing states. Sometimes you need to take from both files, sometimes you need to take from one, but you can win by making that right move to one of those losing states, handing your opponent a losing state. So those are winning states. And you, we can keep going forever, I'll just show one more layer. Uh, three five and five three are also losing states. It takes a bit more work because there's a lot of moves to check. But if you check all the moves from three five, they either go to one of those W states in that upper row or one of those W states on that lower row, depending on the move. So those are also losing states, which we'll label a pen. And so the general idea here is you're in a winning state if you have some good move to a losing state. And you're in a losing state if you're doomed because all of your moves are to a winning state or the game is over and you don't really have any moves. So that's a nice general idea, and it applies not just to this game of White House game, but also applies to all sorts of games of perfect information. So this isn't going to work for poker, but if you really wanted to, you could try and sort of think of, say, the end of a game of chess in this kind of way, or other sorts of deterministic games. Um, so if we wanted to write some code, not that we have to, if we have a function called move that gives you all of the states you can move to, then if you like Python or JavaScript, here is some sort of very uh, simplistic uh, code that will do this job of determining, is the state I'm looking at a W state? It's a W state if there's any move or if there's some move that's to a state that's not a W state, because it's a losing state. That's, that's just the basic idea. And as I said, this applies to all sorts of things. Um, and let's see, how would we use this? Let's say we had this and we knew all sorts of W and L states for White House game. Uh, then we could build a table like this, maybe with slightly more efficient code. And so here is a table of all sorts of W and L states for White House game. So we have the, uh, the 3, 5 that we saw before, and the uh, 1, 2. And there are several other L states, and most of the states are W states. Because to be a W state, you just need one good move. But to be an L state, it has to be that unique situation where all of your moves hand your opponent the winning state. And so if we have a table like this, or at least if we can calculate these values, then if we want to know how to play well, uh, let's say we're at, uh, what is that, 6-8. If we're at 6-8, and we know that's a winning state, the move that we should make is a move to an L state. And if you look at this table, if we try to go down this column by removing from the second pile, we don't get to an L state. If we go across the row by removing from the first pile, we don't get to an L state. But we do have a move that gets to an L state, and if you, say, enumerate whether it's W or L for all the moves, you would find that we could take three from each pile to get to that zero, that, excuse me, that three five that was on that previous slot. And that would be the unique winning move from 6-8. That's the move you should make. And it only takes that little bit, that little core idea about these winning and losing states to find the right move. So that's how this works uh, for White House game. White House game is a little special because you know, there, there happens to be a little bit of a pattern to these L states and W states, but any sort of deterministic game with two players, you can basically write in a similar setup and use similar code and figure out what the good moves are, at least towards the end of the game. Uh, I think, yeah, there's a time for questions. <laughs> so, yeah, so like, how do you handle cases where you're dealing with an unsolved game, like Go or like chess, you know, with a certain kind of Okay, so the question is, how do we handle an unsolved game like Go or chess? And so this idea about winning and losing states really doesn't change for those games. It's just that from only what I've told you, you can't do anything more than the very, very end of like a game of Go or Chess because it's too inefficient without knowing more about Go or Chess. Uh, but for the case of Chess, you could say, okay, let's say for now, stalemates or wins for white and see what happens, or stalemates win for black. 
Uh, but if you get more than a few moves from the end of the game with lower chess, <coughs> you're going to need more than this idea to really say something meaningful. Other questions? Yes. Is there a closed form expression for the set of uh, losing states? For Whitehoff's game? Yes. yes. There's, a, there's actually a very simple closed form expression. Uh, so beyond the scope of this talk, but I haven't talked afterwards about cool. I was just wondering if, yeah, I, yeah. I would have guessed that there is. Yes. And it's already known. It's a very, it's a very, it's a very well studied game. And there are actually, there was just a paper this past week about a variant of Whitehoff's game and what are the L states for that variant. Other questions? Yes. Can you write an optimization program to do the same thing? Can you write an optimization program to do the same thing? Yeah. So, so could, could you write an objective function with constraints? Yeah. So the thing is, with an objective function, if your objective is to win the game, you'll likely end up reproducing this exact same idea if you're doing it perfectly, or reducing heuristics if you're not doing it perfectly. Like those are the, the kind of two ways that can go. But it's not, it's not like you couldn't hit upon this from a perspective of like an objective function. It's just the objective function can say, you know, you get a million value from winning and zero value from losing, and you can reconstruct the same idea. Yeah. Other questions? Um, yeah. I know you used a uh, you know, simple game as an example, of course, but there. Do you know there's a typical point where it just becomes too many variables to calculate to try and get this win state, like a feasible match for sure. For a certain game? So the question is, uh, you know, this was a simple game, but if we had a more complicated game, is there a tipping point where it's not feasible to calculate these winning and losing states? And in real practice, it really depends on the game and what you know about. So for instance, I already hinted that we actually know more about Whitehouse game. We don't need to use this recursion, even with, say, storing known results with memorization. There are better ways to handle it for that game. And similarly, there are uh, facts known in the field of combinatorial game theory that say, for this class of games, here's a more efficient way of breaking it down and finding out those winning and losing states. But there are other games like chess, where there's not really like this kind of thinking doesn't really help you with chess. Uh, you need to you need to know some facts about chess strategy that's really just about chess to do something like this in any but even slightly efficient way. I guess one more would be, I mean, would you technically turn that into a vector, that kind of knowledge I mean, like, uh, kind of like meta meta game or, or meta knowledge? Yeah, I mean if you if you can prove that, say, in chess, in a certain kind of situation, it's going to be a losing state because we only know, like, the, I don't know much about chess, but the Wilkie King endgames, then you can short circuit that in this logic and make it more efficient. You can certainly introduce knowledge and cap up gain into this approach. Okay. Um, I think I have time for a question or two. Uh, I think you want a question? Yes, there are. 